building off of this idea of sci-fi and just like utilizing technology i know you you're personally a, a technology <laughs> fanatic who yeah. we've heard reads <laughs> the verge daily um yeah. so like the idea of <laughs> and so so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about just kind of the evolution of ai and i'm sure everybody's seen people's new ai uh generated yeah. images on their social media all over the place but i want to talk a little bit more about the idea of like film writing and, and more specifically screenwriting, right? I, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's going to be substantial impacts on, on visual effects, but do you think there could also be something, some, uh, for example, Asif before today's uh, podcast put in deep questions to ask a filmmaker in like an AI software uh, and it came up with like amazing. 10 <laughs> amazing questions, none of which unfortunately we've used today, but it just gives, it gives you some insight into what could happen. And I know you've used AI generation for really deep and meaningful <laughs> things such as Christmas parata recipes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, but, so what are your, what are your Set thoughts on, on, on fire? Yeah, right? No doubt. What what are your thoughts on AI as it relates to the evolution of filmmaking as we move forward here? I'm broadly I'm excited. There there's certain things happening that I straight up can't talk about, which is fun, which is fun to say. But but I like I literally used um one of these AI tools to generate a log line last week. So I, like I had the one pager for this thing and I was like, what are give me three log lines, right? And so I wasn't using it to come up with an idea, but it was summarizing, summarizing an idea. And it like it ended up being that like, okay, elements of all three of these combined make something legible. So I'm excited about, um, yeah, I'll talk about the positives first. So I'm excited about the potential to like speed things up and not just speed things up, but kind of like, it's almost like using any tool like a thesaurus or a calculator where like we started to move past expecting to be able to do every small part of it and we're able to move to the next thing. So like I, I used this AI tool last week to like just see how it worked and generated a bunch of um, ideas and it's story ideas like they were pretty cliche. They weren't that great, but even just the ability to kind of sketch and iterate and then update my prompt and then see what it would say. And like there was an interesting version of kind of sketching out ideas that was happening through that. And so I think you know, on the ideal timeline, there's a version of some of these tools that turns into remembering every phone number that your friend had. Like now that's a weird thing, right? To use your brain capacity to remember 50 phone numbers. Um, <laughs> because it's like, oh, it turns out that wasn't a fundamental part of being human. And so I think there will be some uses in that sense. Um, I, it's, you know, you've talked about the, I put into yesterday, I was like, uh, make a recipe for Christmas bread to see what it comes up with. But I also tried a couple of things where I was like, okay, let me pick five ingredients in my kitchen and said like, make a recipe with these. And I was like, okay, that's a good starting place to like, see what to make for dinner. And so it's kind of at like that third, fourth, fifth grade level right now, did which you like, test unfortunately, it out? did you test out? The I didn't recipe? actually, yeah, it was, again, it wasn't like the most interesting recipe, but I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. Like it could yeah, work. those are yeah. pretty much the steps you would do. But in that thing of like getting you started, it might be interesting or then again, you could adjust your prompt. And so it's at that like fifth grade level, which like s sadly is <laughs> above a lot of the stuff you would hire people for <laughs> sometimes, right? Like, you know, it was like, it's at that level where you can write the like compare and contrast essay and stuff. Um, and so I'm excited about being able to use it as another tool. I'm not too currently worried about it, like replacing people. I think if an idea is replaceable by AI, then it's like something we should probably move on from. When I was doing the story generation ideas, I'm like, okay, this would never have come up with Knives Out and the cool twists and turns that Ryan Johnson's bringing to it. But it could write a pretty decent CSI episode because they're following a really specific formula. So yeah, I'm hoping yeah. that that becomes a way to kind of push ahead and move ahead a little bit. And more, I'm excited about it as like a co-creator of ideas. And here's where I have already used AI a lot before, right? Is um, starting to write a script or come up with a project and starting to think of songs and add songs in a playlist in Spotify and then going, oh, Spotify radio, what do you have as suggestions? And then it's suggesting songs I may never have heard of, but that thematically fit. Or putting a lot of production design ideas into a Pinterest and then going, hey, what kind of pins is Pinterest suggesting? And so you kind of have this AI assistant then that is like, you know, you're not, it's not doing the job, but it's helping gather those things and helping find those things. And so yeah, there is a certain use you. case for that. <laughs> I think we're um, about to get interrupted. I think someone's here to clean up. The <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I think it's interesting in that sense. I mean, people don't really often think about how much AI and the robots have already taken over. If you look at like the financial markets, <laughs> like we already. Oh, it's all algo AI yeah, and robots, absolutely. right? They're yeah. just not robots who walk around and look like people. But like we absolutely have let our society be taken over by robots. That happened like eight years ago. So um, that's already happened. We're we past just, it. Yeah. Do we and just embrace it we, or do we? Yeah, we I do? think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm a little afraid. 
I was going to say there's a lot to be said for like yeah, the copyright side artists, of it, and especially yeah. on the AI art side of people saying like, oh, the styles are being taken up. And so th I think a lot of that, yeah, and a lot of that's going to have to be worked out. I think there are cool use cases. Like I've heard of an artist who, because the, the AI models are available if you know how to like train them yourself and everything. So like there's one artist who put all his own art into it, trained it on his own style, and then he's using it as a brainstorming thing of like, okay, I got this commission. Okay, this idea in my style. And then sometimes it comes up with like, well, that's a cool color. Or that's a cool idea. And then he'll use that as a starting point. And so I think that kind of stuff can be mm. cool, but we'll always want that certain amount of a human touch. Um, and it kind of challenges us on that because if it can do a really good job of, again, like an episode of CSI, then it forces you to go, okay, my job's not gonna be, how do I learn to do that perfectly? It's going to be, what twist can I bring to it? What additional can I add on top of that? Hey, if you like that clip, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more content and more conversations with incredible Muslim artists and creatives. The Halal Gap is a Moscow's production. Stay up to date with us by searching Moscow's Film Fest on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok.